All right, so this is uh, fly tying for beginners uh, video number two. The first video was a welcome, kind of quick introductory as to what we're doing. Uh, and so what you see in the vise is the bug that we're going to tie. Uh, we're going to do it two ways. Uh, we're going to use peacock curl and thread. And uh, we're also going to do it a second way by using some dubbing. Um, now the cool thing about this is, is you can use whatever thread that you have, right? Um, you can use black thread, you could use white thread and color it, you could use olive thread, uh, orange thread, yellow, I mean really whatever. This is, this is about learning uh, just the very fundamentals of tying flies. Um, so there's no, um, you know, kind of take all the weight off your shoulders and uh, just follow along and uh, let's get you going. So. Uh, there's two types of hooks that you're going to typically see. <clears throat> I apologize, I should have already had them pulled. But I didn't. So let me uh, grab one and then I'll grab the other. The first one's going to be called a straight shank hook. And this is a straight shank hook. Uh, you can see uh, that it's flat across the back right here. And you have a bend. And uh, you'll see. Uh, there's a distance between the hook point and the bottom side of the shank and this part here is called the gap Okay uh, Now the eye part here uh, Sometimes you'll find eyes that are straight that would be called a straight eye. This would be called a down eye uh, And then you'll find some hooks I just happen to have one handy on a salmon fly where the eye is pointing up and that would be called an up eye so There you go. So now when you're looking at your packages of hooks uh, It's a straight straight uh, straight eye, down eye, up eye. Okay? Uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, also, we have things that are curved shank hooks, and there's many kinds of curved shank hooks. And uh, I'm just going to pull one out here and pop that in the vise. And we're going to tie a fly here real quick. Uh, so just uh, if, if you already know all this stuff, just bear with me for another few minutes for those of you that uh, or for those that don't. And so this is kind of what's called a curve shank hook. It's a pretty standard curve shank hook. Uh, it would be called like a, a scud hook or an emerger hook. Uh, it just means that the uh, the bend is a little more rounded and it has a profile that's rounded. And again, uh, it's got a downed eye. Uh, you'll find them sometimes with a straight eye. Uh, and they're pretty rare with an up eye where that's that's coming up. But uh, so anyway, since that hook is in the vise, let's just uh, let's get tying. So I've got my thread already loaded in my bobbin. Okay, so you have your bobbin, you have your bobbin holder. Uh, most people refer to this as the bobbin. The whole thing is the bobbin. So uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, another common tool that you're going to have is what's called a bodkin. And a bodkin is simply just a metal shaft like this, and it's got a little point here, and it's got a little handle here. Uh, the cool ones have a little hole in the back. Even the cool ones are pretty cheap, uh, only a few dollars. And uh, they slip very neatly over most eyes, which is going to help finish the fly, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. So. When you're starting your thread on the uh, on your fly, you want to start your thread. Uh, most people tie with the uh, thread coming towards them like this. Okay, so we're going to hold the tip of the bobbin up, the tag down. This is the uh, this is the tag. So when you hear people refer to the tag, it's the leftover thread that's coming out of the bobbin. So just like this. Yep. And we're going to put a couple wraps in. Uh, what we're going to perform here is what's called a jam knot. And I'm going to go back over that again in just a second. When you're starting your jam knot, uh, I will take my bodkin and run it right behind the eye so that it touches. It can't go any further forward. You can see I'm running it into there. Now, most bodkins are going to be about the distance of the eye itself. Um, so you'll see in a lot of videos or whatever, 
uh, that they'll, you'll, you'll hear refer to uh, an eye length back or something of that nature. Uh, that's a good gauge. Uh, I prefer using my bodkin because it's a visual marker and uh, I can I can you know hold it up there and just take a look and see where it is. I'm going to take this thread off real quick and I'm going to hold this up. Oop, a little fuzz on there. And uh, I'm going to take a sharpie marker and mark it. I'm going to mark the hook just like that. Now, this is uh, for those of you that are, uh, if this is the first time you've uh, taken thread to hook, or uh, maybe um, you have a hard time seeing, you need glasses or magnifiers, uh, something along those lines, this can be a good starting point for you. So now that we have our little mark on the hook, I'm going to start my thread right at the front of that and we're going to create the jam knot okay so we're going to take our thread okay it's away from the hook we're going to run it right into there and we're going to make one wrap okay just like so and then we're going to make one more but this time when we do it we're going to pull our tag this piece here towards the back just a little you could run it straight out the back as long as uh, maneuvered or moving towards the back and put another wrap in. Now, when you've done just that, you should be able to let go of this and have everything sit and not have your thread fall off the hook. So learn to perform that and uh, hey, the rest is easy, right? So. I'm going to pick this back up, I'm going to hold it, I'm going to keep some tension on it running to the back, and I'm just going to start to wrap back. Now, in a lot of videos you're going to hear what's called touching turns, and that simply means that your thread, uh, on if you're, I'm right handed, okay, so if I'm right handed, thread on the right side is touching the left side of the last wrap. Uh, if you're left-handed that'll be opposite for you. And so we're going to just do touching turns. And you're going to hear this terminology a lot in tying flies. And you can see I'm just going nice and slow, methodically, just taking my time. I'm just wrapping, making it look nice along the hook shank. Okay. Pretty simple stuff right here. You can see that my tag has kind of gone underneath and it's crossed back over. No big deal. Don't worry about that. Now, as you approach your hook point here, you're going to have to angle your thread just a little bit so that you're kind of working in a oh about a you know 30 degree angle off the back okay now also I don't know if you can see this or not you can see how I've got some gap right there you can if you need to take your tag and pull all of that forward and it's going to slide everything back up into place. Okay, so we can kind of wrap wild like this. I can take my tag and pull. So if you have a hard time seeing, uh, you know, or whatever, you can you can totally do that. Uh, this is all fundamentals here, but uh, we want to keep a nice underbody. Uh, this is going to be the underbody of your fly, your basic thread wraps. And we're just gonna keep going. Got a little bit of a space there. I'll pull it forward. Now, the more you do this, and the better you get at it, uh, you're gonna start flying through this. Like it's not even gonna be a thing. Okay. So just take a little bit of time, practice, uh, and that's the way you can kind of correct yourself is by just pulling all that thread forward. The standard length of a fly is between uh, behind the eye 
and the barb of the hook. And my thread is hanging at, right at the barb. Uh, you just can't quite see it. And I'll, I'll adjust that for you so you can. Right there. This little pokey coming out the back. That's the barb. So I'm right there. I'm going to come in and take my scissors and just trim that out. So cutting the tag. Next, I'm going to start by wrapping forward with touching turns, nice and slow, to help cover up any uh, imperfections that you may have on the fly. I'm going to get just past the barb and I'm going to show you something called thread control. Now, you're gonna, you may or may not hear a lot about thread control. And what that means is, is with your thread, okay, on so, some threads are woven. Um, think of like a, a hair braid, okay, that you'd put in a hair. Uni thread is a woven thread, okay? That means they have numerous strands of thread that do this, you know, crisscross applesauce thing and weave just like this uh, to build the entire piece of thread. There are other threads, um, just I have on hand uh, as a UTC, that are flat threads. And these threads, they lay side by side. Uh, so each end of it, you can kind of see how that splices apart, webs apart. That's a flat thread, okay? Now, when you're doing what's called thread control, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We are going to spin our bobbin just like this to either tighten that thread or separate it to get it to lay flat. Uh, this also can be referred to as a rope. So if you tighten it up, it's a rope. If you flatten it out, it's flat. Uh, all threads do this. Some threads do it better than others. Uh, woven threads don't lay as flat as a flat thread. And you can get your thread to lay fat, uh, flat, excuse me, just by spinning it like that. So I'm, I'm twisting this with my thumb pulling back to the right. Okay. That's going to help open it up now or make it lay flat. If I need it to spin together, I will twist it with my thumb coming out to the left. And that's going to tighten the thread into a rope. And then you can decide, you can decide what you need and uh, so if you if you come across other videos, let me zoom back in real quick. The talk about that, then that's what it is. So now that I've zoomed in a little bit here, you can see the difference between having it laying flat and then having it spun together as a rope. I've got a little bubble here. So if you have a little bubble, you know, don't be afraid to back your thread off, like so and open your thread up or lay it flat. And you can just do it with a couple twists. And again, touching turns, coming all the way forward. Now, there'll be some rigidness in here, and that's okay. Uh, you know, these bugs aren't just super flat and super symmetrical. I mean, they do have veins and they do have exoskeletons and all kinds of other things that are uh, fantastic for a bug that uh, uh, as you get better is going to uh, allow you to play more with this so there we go so now I've got it uh, I've got my thread started I've come down and wrap back forward now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get a very basic material called peacock hurl and this is your peacock curl. 
uh, this is strung. Strung meaning that it's got a little uh, little rope down there. And we're just going to come in and pull three or four away from the uh, the rest of the strung body. And then you want to come through and uh, just gently try to even the temps up just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, we want to we want to get the tip side facing together, and then uh, the butt side or the stem side facing together. You can see the little white tips here, uh, and you're going to notice this off of numerous feathers that you touch when you when you're pulling them away from the rest of the body. Uh, you're going to have a little white. Uh, thing towards the back and that's and so that, that just is a way to help identify this so when you're tying in something that has very thin tips uh, it could be any any feather really uh, the tips are very fragile uh, this could be any kind of duck feather or peacock or I mean geez just really whatever but if you're going to tie this in and use it for a wrapping to palmer. Palmer just means that we're going to wrap it over the hook shank. We want to come in and trim this out so that we get down into the beefier part of the stem as it were. Now since I've trimmed that out, let me zoom in just a little bit. Now I'm going to seat or place my material down at an angle and make a wrap over it. You can note, you'll notice that sometimes it rolls on you and that's okay if it does that that's not a big deal and you'll see that I'm also wrapping towards the back so that we're wrapping it in towards the beefier side as it were and now I can come in and lift this uh, front front facing material up and I can gather it and just trim it out and now I'm going to wrap that material back in going forward okay pretty simple next what we're going to do oh, sorry is we're going to either just take all this material and wrap it around as is like so which is fine some material that's rather thin and um, will snap easy uh, we can take all of these individual strands and start to twist them together and this works on a bunch of materials it's not just this peacock curl we're just going to slowly twist with our fingers. I'm licking my left thumb, left index, and just twisting. Okay. And we can take our right thumb, right index, and just kind of preen or tease all these individual little fibers out. And now we can wrap it. And what that's done is all these stems have twisted together and reinforced one, reinforced one another and they form a little tighter wrapping kinda like so now either way is right it just uh, depends on works, what works better for you so now that I've worked my material up to my thread we need to tie this off and so I'm going to angle my material to the back and I'm going to cross all this over so that I've, you can see just like that I crossed it over and I'm going to do that two or three times and once you've done it by about the third time and you want to have somewhat of a tight wrap there you should be able to let go of everything again you see both hands wiggling fingers and that should be tied in next to finish that off what I like to do is I'll 
take all this material, reverse it to the back, and I will put a few wraps in on the front side just so that I catch some of the stem going that direction. So we tied everything in going one way, right? We tied it in at an angle like this. We crossed, over, or crossed our thread over the material, and now we're working back. And now we can take our scissors and come in and cut this out. And now you just have what's called a thorax for most bugs. So we're going to go back to our little bodkin here. There's several ways to finish the fly. Uh, actually, first, let me show you with the finger. So we'll take our finger. OK, there's different ways to finish the fly. I'm going to take my finger right on the thread and make a little loop or a little U, just like that. And I'm going to take my finger and twist it so that it becomes an X. I can do that a couple times. I can place my fingernail right on. Whoop. It's hard for me to do it slow. We're just going to wrap it together a couple times. Whoop. And I'm just going to place my fingernail right on top and draw it down. Let me zoom in so you can see that again as the knot closes. This is called a half hitch knot. You'll find uh, a lot of flies require this knot during the process of tying, even towards the tail or wherever. And it's going to close like that. Now, the little hole on the back of your bodkin is the same thing. I'll zoom out. Oops, sorry. I'll zoom out real quick so you can see that. <clears throat> These are good knots. They're not the strongest of knots. So I'm going to take my half inch tool. I'm going to push it right into my thread. Wrap my, or make a few turns with my bobbin over. I'm going to slide that right on top and s just slowly pull and tighten. Okay. And now you can trim out your thread. If you're only going to use the half hitch knot, then I highly recommend you have some uh, super glue or some sort of head cement to just put a little dab on top to make sure that it holds tight. Okay. All right, so that was the curved shank. Let's move over to the straight shank hook, and we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to use a different material. We're going to use dubbing. And dubbing is huge in fly tying, okay? So I'm going to start. Well, I want to make sure I'm doing it with you guys. So I'm going to use my bodkin as a gauge behind the eye. Let me zoom in. I keep bumping the camera, sorry. And the reason we want this as a gauge is because this front portion, where, where all this metal is, that's where, where we want the head of the fly to go. So you can start all the way back here, which is just fine, and wrapping it in, just like so. Touching turns back to the barb. We'll trim out our tag, a little leftover pieces of the tag. And we will, touching turns, bring it back forward. All the way to where we started. And when you do this, uh, just practice this over and over, and before you know it, you're going to be tying flies like you wouldn't believe. So you can see that I've got my bodkin there, and I've got about an extra half distance. So this would be considered one and a half eye lengths back, or uh, a bodkin and a half width back. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom out again, and so we can work with some dubbing. Now... 
You're gonna, you'll hear a lot of people when you ask how much dubbing should I use. Um, the best thing I've ever found to show somebody how much dubbing to use is just a clothes pin that they, they use for uh, sewing. Uh, it's got the little head on there. It's just a little needle. You know, they'll poke it through one side and the other, or the other, or to the other, so that uh, two pieces of cloth stick together, uh, so that they can kind of stitch it together. So we're going to use this as our gauge. So if you have something like that, a little sewing needle works really well here. So when you're pulling out your dubbing. You're going to have, you know, you're going to pull out a whole bunch like this, and um, we want to go with the less is more kind of factor. And uh, so what it, what does that mean? Well, we want less. So this is a whole big clump. You can kind of see how much I have there. Uh, it's about the size of my thumb. That's just way, way too much. Uh, this clump here would probably tie uh, 20, 30 bugs of what we're going to do with it here, just to kind of give you an idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to just, we're going to kind of separate some, and you can kind of work this in just pieces, just a little bit at a time. Uh, and now the way you want to work your dubbing um, is you're going to see that some of these strands and fibers are going to start to run out like that, and we want that. We want to grab those tips and just pull everything away so that we start to align the fibers of the dubbing and then I can lay it right back on top and I can slowly pull away and as I pull away you can kind of see how all that dubbing all that material wants to move in the same direction and so now I have that dubbing there and I'm going to bring that little <coughs> sewing pin back into play. So I'm going to zoom in. Now with dubbing, if you're able, uh, turn your vise to the side. So just it, it gets all this out of your way. And I'm going to lick my fingers. You can use wax here. Uh, you can use chapstick if you need to in a pinch. But I'm going to rotate this simply by kind of placing my index finger on the thread and the dubbing and rotating it using my thumb so that it starts to twist and roll together just like that now <clears throat> once you have the beginning of what's called a noodle uh, you'll a lot of people refer to this as a noodle what you can do just if you have something very similar to this okay you can just slide it up pretty close to the actual hook shank and you can make one wrap over. Now what that's done is it's trapped all your dubbing. You've caught it all. And it will allow you I mean, oh, sorry I keep whacking the camera. It's going to allow you to start pulling this down slowly and twisting at the same time. So as I'm pulling the material down very gently with my right hand, I'm twisting it together with my left thumb, left index. Okay, Just like so. That's how you you create your noodle. Now, you'll see that I have all this fuzzy McGruff stuff hanging out back. Uh, leave that there and the reason for that is because if you need more you can add more seamlessly to this uh, and if you need less it's easier to take it off your thread so I'm going to zoom in again you always twist your dubbing in the same direction what it, what either way is right just always the same way so I'm going to twist it, I'm going to put one wrap over now I can pull, twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist, wrap, and you can see that I'm just going right on top of that other dubbing. 
just over and over. You can grab it, pull it. Uh, some guys will grab the dubbing and the thread together. So if you got to do that and wrap it like this, that's good too. Now, once you have your little thorax built with dubbing, you can see I have all this loose stuff, and I can easily pull this away and pinch it off. If my dubbing is all twisted tight like so, it doesn't. It gets caught, and it doesn't want to pull off as easily. Uh, if you've done that, then what you want to do is reverse the way you twisted the dubbing on, and or you can pull it up and place a wrap over the top to kind of tie it in. Uh, and use your scissors to just trim the excess off, as if you if you're not able to pull it off. So. Uh, and again, we're going to use our finger to do a half hitch. Oop. And just slowly put it together. I'm going to do two this time. Oop, maybe. Maybe. There we go. I wouldn't go more than two half hitches on your finger just because it gets very difficult to control. Uh, it slides off your finger like it did mine there. And that was only with two. Uh, so you can do that. You can also, again, bring your half hitch tool in off the back side of your bodkin, uh, which is much more preferable than you can see. It just all slides off, it knots together, and boom. Uh, if you do that, do it a few times, two or three times. It's all going to lock together pretty well. Pull your, pull your thread tight. And now when you go to cut, you don't even have to cut. You can simply just leave your, oh, I know that got blurry, but you can leave your scissors open and just run it into the thread. So there you go. That's the, uh, it's basically the same bug we just did with two different materials. Oh, I meant to show you the whole pin. I can do that real quick. So when you're using your dubbing, I'm just going to tie back on in the middle real quick here so you can see that. When you're using dubbing and you want to gauge, I'll do it again here real quick. I'm going to get just a little bit. Just like so. So, sorry, I meant to show you that a minute ago, and I forgot. So here's my pen. Here's my little th sewing pen. So you can use that as kind of a gauge, as a reference as to what people mean when you're watching videos or other instructions that say less is more uh, and you're having a hard time gauging what that looks like on a video if you have something like this um, you can just line it up next to it just like that and uh, you won't need to do this very long if you do it this way you'll 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 get a grasp of it pretty quick so there you go that is the uh, completion of the uh, first video for you guys. Uh, I hope you know you guys found that informative. Um, in order to tie little buggy looking creatures that look like this, uh, these things will totally fish for you. I'm not really sure there's a name for them, but they, uh, they look like little bugs in the water. If you don't believe me, Next time you go to the river, uh, walk along the shoreline and find a, a medium-sized rock, something about, you know, let me zoom out. Find a rock that's about the size of this. It kind of fits in my palm. Pick it up, turn it over, and look what's underneath that rock. And you're going to start to find stuff that looks just like this. I guarantee it. So uh, there you go. Practice those things, uh, and um, you'll have a, you'll, you know before you know it, you'll have some bug bugs that look like this. And um, like I said, these things will totally fish, no problem. 
Now you can kind of get a different, different flavor of what a little peacock curl looks like as opposed to some dubbing. Uh, and, you know, both of these are very fishable flies. Uh, uh, and then from here, once you've kind of mastered this very basic, simple step, uh, you'll be ready to jump into the next video, which we're going to add some wire and uh, do a few other fun things. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. And uh, as always, happy tying. Take care, everybody.